Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. Today I'm very excited to be doing a room from TriHackMe. This is called Hamlet and it's a Shakespeare inspired room and there's a few things that we're going to learn today. We're going to learn how to enumerate a web application and this one the creator says it's a very unknown web application. We need to enumerate it, break into that web application, get a reverse shell and we'll find ourselves inside of a Docker container. Then we have to learn how to escape Docker containers after they are running as root on the system. Then we'll get a bunch of flags. So there's going to be a lot of things that we'll learn today. Make sure to watch until the end because I intend to go straight to the point and show you how I do and how I complete this room. So as you can see here, I've already launched the room and this is my IP address. And the first thing that I do in my methodology is of course, we need to start with enumeration. So let's enumerate this machine using Nmap. So we open our terminal. I already created a folder here where I'm working from, nmap. All right, so we run nmap and as sv to see service version, sc to use some default scripts. And I'll use the minus p option here to scan all ports on this system. And then of course the IP address. Okay, so after our scan is done running, we'll notice right away that we have port 21, which is open. And on port 21, we have FTP with anonymous login enabled. So right now we move right away straight to port 21 and I'll start by signing in and stealing these two files and see what they are after. All right, so starting in my Hamlet directory here, I'll do an FTP, sign in as anonymous, no password, and I'll enter passive mode here. Then I can say there, and as you can see right away we have a password policy and UFW status. So I'll do an mget. I would like to get everything that's in here. Yes, I like that. And yes, for that one as well. Okay, exit. So we just looted here two files, UFW status and um, password policy. Let's get password policy. So according to this, our password for policy, we should have all lowercase, which is kind of weird, then uh, between 12 and 14 characters long. Okay, so that's the password policy. That's good if we need to make our own passwords for brute forcing. So that's good to know. Then we can also get the UFW file, and we see that we actually have UFW. So when you're getting a reverse shell and you have a firewall, just use posts that are already open. So if I'm to set up a reverse shell for this, I'll probably use port 8000 here because it's already open and the fire will be able to let us in. Okay, that was port 21 for us. We need to move to the next one, port 22. Usually I skip this one because usually there is the, it's not the intended way to break in. Most of the time people do secure SSH, especially if the version is the latest one. So we move on to 80, open my browser. Right away, we are met with this message here. We are a small group of researchers annotating Shakespeare's Hamlet using Web Anno. This is the version. So we have a new version. I'll just open that in a new tab. If you want help, send an email to Michael's, Michael, also known as Ghost. So he's taking a character from Hamlet. And he's, this is his last name. And his email is ghost at Web Anno. So we now have a domain name here. So we can even look for subdomains here if we wanted to. Or we can add this to our Etsy host as well. So he's obsessed with Hamlet and vocabulary used in Shakespeare. So we know a password policy that is all our case 12 characters. And we now have a user who is obsessed with Shakespeare and the vocabulary there. So what this tells me is we can make a wait list to try to brute force my course password anywhere that we find using the whole book of Hamlet. So that's um, the, the part here. Port 80, and as you can see, this looks like the actual book that is being annotated. This is a uh, Hamlet book. And it's on slash hamlet.txt. Always paying attention to the URL. And then of course we can view the page source, see if there's anything interesting here. Uh, there isn't, this is actually the page source. All right, we also have port 8,000 and also port 5, we actually have port 501. So this says Nagios. If you don't know how to interact with a port, this is what you do. You just come here, say netcat, then the IP address, 
501. Okay, Grave Digger. What do you call a person who builds stronger things than a pen tester? Okay. Right, so it looks like in this, there's nothing here. Look, if we keep, you just keep getting some random text from Hamlet. We should make maybe fuzz this. If we don't find anything else, we might fuzz this for um, buffer overflow. But for now, we we'll move on. One thing that we didn't do is on port 80, we actually didn't do due diligence. We just looked at here. We looked at the page source. We can run uh, derb quickly here, you know, to make sure that we do proper enumeration for port 80. Derb is just a quick and dirty way. Since we have multiple web websites here, uh, derb is just going to be a quick and dirty way to enumerate. Then we can pull go buster with a complex word list if we don't find anything. But for now, we run derb buster. I mean derb. Then uh, of course. We have to look for our robots dot text because that's where people usually uh, put interesting things. Uh, in this case, we get our flag one. So flag one for number one. Copy that. Come here, and we have to put it right here. Okay. That was flag one on there in robots dot text. Then let's move on to uh, so this will run in the background, then we just let it finish. Then we move on to the next port, which is uh, a Debian port. A, another Hamlet page. All right, since, since we are in, in this, oh, this is interesting. Let's view the page source for this thing. How, how are we getting to this Hamlet on page 8,000? All right, right away, we notice that we are actually pointing to the repository project hamlet.txt. Okay, so it's just a redirect to this place here. So we need to save this information somewhere. Redirects to that location. We don't have robots this time. Fire up, go bust on this as well, or Nikto. But uh, we have one more web page that to check. So we go to 8080. All right, so 8080 is asking us for a username and password. But going back to this right here, our initial port 80, we already have a username, uh, Michael, also known as Ghost. And then, of course, Michael likes, is obsessed with Hamlet, where we also have Hamlet, the book. In the password policy, it says that uh, the password should be lowercase, and between 12 and 14 characters long. So we can create our own word list using this little tool called, I don't know how to say it, Creo, su, Q, <laughs> people call it Q. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put our IP address here, which is 10.10.80.246. All right, so you may be wondering like, well, where did I get this information? I already have it in my notes, but also I've done this before where you, if you run this tool, so it might be installed on a Kali or you might have to install it. Minus M, that's the minimum number of characters that you want. In this case, we want 12. Then the word list that we want to create, we can just name it word list. And then, of course, we need to put the URL of the website that we want to generate the word list from. And that's how you generate a word list. You can also go in depth, like if it had multiple layers, if our website had multiple layers, you can put minus D and say how many directories inside of the website you want to go. In this case, we're just going for one. And this will give us a word list. All right. So if I get cat word, word list the text. See, we got, a, we got a bunch of um, words here. How many do I have? Let's pipe that to WC minus L, I believe. We got 79. However, our password policy says they have to be lowercase. So I found a really neat trick from the internet. I just said, hey, how do I convert all these things to be lowercase? And I found that I can just run this command here. And what this is going to do is going, is going to run this TR, TR command, convert every uppercase to be lowercase. That's in that word list. And then it will give us a new lower word list dot text. That's what I'm going for. So now if I get 
lower word list or text, everything in that word list is now lowercase. So that's a really neat trick that I just found uh, by just Googling. I think it's the first result that you find how to convert things. So now that I have 79 words and I have a wait list, what, what is the next thing to do? I need to brute force the hell out of that website, right? So I'm going to use Burp Suite here. The username that we're going to use is going to be Ghost. We're going to use the username of Ghost because that's the one in quotes for Michael. And also it's part of his email. So the username is usually the first part of an email. That's why we're going to use Ghost here. We want to intercept this request in Burp Suite, then brute force the page. So we type Ghost as our username. Password, let's just put password because we don't know what it is. Then turn interception on. Then log in. This request should be intercepted by Burp Suite. And once it gets here, let's send it to repeater to make our life easier. Actually, let's send it to Intruder. Let's use Intruder um, to brute force. In Intruder, here's our target, which is okay. Let's go to positions. Here's all the positions that is, it is set. Let's clear those positions. Our username is going to be ghost. The password, that's the one where we want to set up as a position. So add that position. In the payloads, I'm just going to do this. We can browse to, the, to this or we can just paste the whole thing. It's only 79, so I'll just copy and paste. Then paste all the passwords in here. And once we have the password, I'm not changing anything here. It's position, the only position that we have. So it's a very simple attack. It's a little slower, but then of course, uh, hit start. What we're looking at when we are brute forcing is, using burp is the length. 8730 is the normal length. Let's watch this. And when it finds the correct password, it's going to change the length from this 8730 to something different. That's when we know that we have found the password. All right, so after a while, on 76, we see that this is a different length here, 404. And the status was 302, meaning we were redirected here. So this must be our password. So we just copy that. We now have a username and a potential password. So let's go and sign in with this and see if it works. So we type our username of ghost. And of course, the password that we just found. All right, so as you can see here, we are in as a user ghost. So we can look at our projects here and we have the Hamlet project. So I see that I can import a project here, but the importation, if you try it, it requires like a zipped file or something like that. So let's look at the users. We have a ghost, which is us. Then we have Ophelia. Then we have admin. Okay. Then we have our documents. And it looks like we can also upload a document here. So what I would try to do here is, since this is just a website, I can see if I can try to upload a PHP reverse shell here. Let's, let's actually do that right now. So for a PHP reverse shell, I will just use Pentest Monkey. But I, in my notes here, I also have like uh, reverse shells. The most popular one is going to be your Pentest Monkey uh, reverse shell. You can just download this from Pentest Monkey PHP Reverse Show if you want. But that's the one, that's exactly the one that I'm, I'm, I'm going with. And they tell you how to change it here. I, I, I already have that same PHP Reverse Show from Pentest Monkey and I named it rev.php. If you look up on your machine, you already have this. So here you put your IP address. This should be your tunnel IP if you're on VPN. Then of course you need to change the port. I'm using port 8000. Why am I using port 8000? They have a firewall over there. From the OSCP, I found out that if you use ports that are already open on the victim, you are likely to get in. So I changed this to 8000. I put my IP address here, and that's all I did. Then I would um, then move this rev PHP to the victim by going to browse. And then um, in my downloads, that's where I actually put that one in. Copied it as rev2. It's the same. Rev2.php is the same as rev.php. Then import. Let's see if we, it fails or not. So we now have rev.php. 
what all we need to do now is uh, trigger this reverse shell and get a, a shell. So to do that, first we need to start a, a listener. L, V, and P on port 8000, which is the port that we put. Then, of course, after that, where can you find our, our file that we put there? Remember, earlier we found out that the real um, Hamlet.txt is right here on port 8000. So if that's the upload path for Hamlet.txt, then we should be able to find our new file. So let's do some tests here. This is the same Hamlet file. And we also found that if we put the absolute path, it should be slash repository like that. Then hit enter. And as you can see, this is the absolute path. And I would like us to compare what we have in this URL to what we have here. This is the location for the file. And according to this, we went to the repository and we went inside of a project, which is true. We are in the Hamlet project. And then we went to document, which is true because we are in the documents folder, but it's calling it uh, document. Zero, that's a document number. In this case, it starts at zero, and source is goes to Hamlet. So to test, you can just say rev2.txt. You will notice that this, not, not .txt, .php, You notice that this right here says, well, we didn't find the file. Why? Because the document position was zero here. We need to change this to be number one because it increases from zero to one. So if you hit enter now, you see it's hanging because we're going there and the source is goes to rev2 to PHP. And sure enough, if you come back here, our reverse shell comes back. It's very important that we do that the correct way. Because without figuring that out, you will not get this reverse shell here. And of course, once we are here, I like to see if I can fix my shell, which Python, we don't have any Python, which Python 3, we don't have that either. So our only <laughs> thing here is hopefully we can just export our term so I can clear the, the screen. This is just to make sure that my terminal is actually usable. Yeah, slightly usable. <laughs> All right. So ls minus la from where we are. I see this docker env file here, which shows me that this is an environment, of environment variable file for docker. So we might be inside of a docker environment by just looking at that. cd such home ls minus la. Sure enough, I'm just WW data. I don't have much going on here. So we might be in a Docker environment, uh, as you can see. So what we can do is let's move on to privilege escalation. We are WW data, even inside of Docker, we need to try to be somebody better. So let's go to my privilege escalation. All right. In my privilege escalation, the first thing that I do in Linux almost all the time is um, I look for history files. I also look for SUIDs. So let's find out if we can find any SUIDs here. That's a simple win. And right here, you notice most of these are common things that we have SUIDs set, like mount and things like that. They all run as root. But lucky for us, we have cat. The cat command runs as root here. The easiest thing when you do that is such etc shadow. If you can run the cat command, you might as well steal the password. And as you can see, we run cat as root. We find the root password, hash. So now we need to come back here, steal that, of course. Okay, let's create a file called hash. All right, so looking at our hash here, we no notice that it starts with this EY here. This is a crypt format. This is not the regular uh, old format in the newest versions of Ubuntu we have it. So we need to make sure that when we pass John, for cracking that we specify that it's crypt All right let's use my notes if I switch John all right so here's my format here for John 
I'm just going to use that. Just to give you an, an example, this is the old format. It's dollar sign six or dollar sign some number. This is dollar sign EY. So um, make sure to remember that. So instead of big crypt, this is a crypt. And I'll use Roku to text. And my pass, my, my thing is in in the hash file. And John should go through this and see if we can crack it. All right, so right away, uh, in a little bit, John finished and we find the password here. So we can now go back and become root inside of that uh, environment. So we should use to root password that we found. ID. There we go. Okay. All right. So we're in as a root. Let's see if we can uh, move around here. PWD. We're in such home. Okay. We have nothing there. CD slash root. LS. LS minus LA. Okay. We have bash RC and a flag here. All right, so it looks like we found flag number five. I haven't found number two, three. I only found one. <laughs> so I don't know where the other flags are. But let's go ahead and give them flag number five here. That's interesting. It says it's the correct flag. Let's make sure we enumerate this container here as well. <coughs> CD slash, then LS minus LA. What's in this main here? And here we're looking for something that doesn't belong in a normal. Like we can check the mount. Uh, root is fine. S bin staged is not usually there by default. Uh, LS minus LA. And here's another flag here. So we found flag number four. So two flags in the container. Let's see if we can find another one. All right, I'm still missing two <laughs> and flex six. This is interesting. I know I'm inside of a container because of that uh, container environment file that we saw last time. But let's see if we can do some escaping here. All right, so for privilege escalation, I'm going to use this understanding Docker container escapes. And it looks like if we can escape, we will actually be able to run commands on the host properly. And here's a proof of concept that I'm going to use. Can I copy this whole thing here? I'm just going to copy this. Then we can really work these commands together, make sure that they work for us and they do what we want. So first, I'll paste them all here. Then let's go them through them line by line. Uh, we don't need this because this is just studying Docker. In the container, this is where we are interested in. So we're making a directory mount on notify release, which is fine. Then the path is HCM tab. So technically, we should be able to echo any command to the command line here, and things will work. So what can we do? We can echo a bash one liner to give us a rest shell. We can echo a command that can add a user. Then we can get in as a user and uh, with root privileges, or we can echo and cat anything. So for now, let's run this. I would have made so many mistakes. Okay, that's good. Then, of course, now we need to echo one to release. Just make sure to follow the instructions the way they are so you don't mess anything. And the host. Okay, then the host command. All right, so once we do this, um, it's just now a matter of whatever commands we run, we have to run them in this sequence. It has to be the echo bin sh, the command that we want, chmod it, and this. And this sequence has to be done every single time we do this, okay? So I know that this sequence is actually working. So first, we define that. 
then we disable the firewall. Last time I was using sudo, this time it's just force disable. Then let's change the permissions on our command and run it. Hopefully that disabled my firewall. All right, so if the firewall was disabled, now I just need to start off again and run my real command. So we start over by echoing that, put our own command. So I'm going to come back on 444. So echo that to the command. Then change the permission. Then of course now, moment of truth, we can run it. But before we do, Let's start our listener. Okay, it's there. Let's see if it runs this time. And we are in. So that was a little dense um, to be able to attack this machine. It was it was kind of interesting. So once we're in here, we can say ls minus. Wow, it's unstable. So if I do an ls, see that I'm in, if I say id, I'm really root, so that's good. All right, since I'm in as root, let me go to the root directory, ls minus la, forget the double thing, I'm not going to try to fix it. Here's a flag, okay, so where is where are the other flag? In fact, I'm still missing two here, and three, I didn't show you how I got it. So let's go ahead and find flag two and three. This took me a while, but if you go back here and go to projects, this is how we got our reverse shell in, in the beginning. Then we resume. On Hamlet, this user here is already an administrator of this system. However, for this project, they're just an annotator. Let's make them a manager and a curator so that they can see everything. Then we can save. All right, so now that he's the manager and curator, we go back here. We should now have a curator and annotator. Let's click on curation and see what happens when you try to curate things. So his annotation is in progress, he says. I can do an open. I'm also a manager, so I should be able to see other people's um, annotations and everything that has happened to this project. All right, so if we resume, as you can see, as ghost with the permissions, there is a message here. Don't forget that this password does not work for web anno. So we copy this KE number. And this was written by Ophelia. And you know that because it was annotated by the uh, user Ophelia. All right. So now that we have that as a password, we need to go back to our system and say, okay, of all the services that we have, what else can we do? We can try to use FTP, Ophelia user, and the new password that we just found. This was really hard for me to figure out. I actually got a lot of help. Someone called nothing on try hack me really helped me with this. So once you get in here, you can say there. Actually, I want it to be in passive mode. That way I can do fun things. First, we see flag here. So you can say get flag. All right, so we go to that flag. That's flag two, uh, three. But if you say PWD, where are we? We're in the home Ophelia directory. Let's minus LA. Okay, let's go to slash home. LS minus LA. I see another one called Grave Digger and Ubuntu. See the Grave Diggers. LS minus LA. So here's Hamlet.txt. 
there's a gravedigger service, but there's a Python script. Anytime we see a Python script, any script we take, get, um, all right, so we store the Python script and the other one. So now if we get out of there, remember we store a file called flag, that's flag three right here. So you come and you paste it in flag three. Then uh, cat revdiggers.py. You can try to understand what this Python script is doing, but at the same time right here, this is the same script that's running on port 501. And you can submit. Now we have completed the room. That was a very, very interesting room. Kind of challenging but at the same time really fun we learned a lot here so if you like this please make sure to like and subscribe and i'll be doing more escaping docker containers rooms that's the reason why i did this one so like and subscribe otherwise i will see you next time